Hello Vinyl Community. Let's talk about some records. Um, as usual records I've been listening to yesterday or a bit today in the morning. Um, let's start with this one. My favorite by the mentioned artist. I'm talking about Trance by Neil Young. I love this album. To be honest, for me Neil Young is one of those artists that I more respect than listen to. I'm just not that much into this kind of sound. Um, it doesn't it doesn't lower my respect for Neil Young as a great artist, composer, guitar player, etc. I have really respect for a lot of uh, musicians that just do not produce some music that it's very appealing to me. Still I'm kind of interested in the history of those people and the time and age when they uh, came to rise. So there are artists that I do experience more through documentaries than to direct listening. That happens, but this is an exception. I think Trance is a wonderful album. I can imagine that this is once again the least favorite album by bona fide uh, Neil Young fans. I can imagine that because it's uh, one of those exceptional albums that uh, might have been a bit shocking for some people when this came out. And this was 1982 and uh, yeah that's the first edition that's famous for having some giant misprint here on, uh, on in the track list. So it has this kind of an explanatory sticker. <laughs> So like an errata in a book. And yeah, the album is famous for kind of uh, combining the typical Neil Young compositions with the, with the wobbling electronic uh, early digital or maybe more analog in parts digital sort of synthesizer sound. So this was even for Neil Young, this was a new territory to discover. Um, and yeah, it has still great musicians on it. From what I read about it, somewhere a bit pissed off about this whole concept. <laughs> but um, I'm happy that this album exists. Some really cool songs on it. It's actually not, for me, it's not. It's kind of not electronic enough. There's still a lot of songs that are basically, um, as you would expect from a Neil Young album. But um, there are some wonderful uh, sort of uh, electronic uh, explorations, tracks like Computer Cowboy and We Are In Control, Sample and Hold. Um, so it's it has this whole theme going on with uh, with uh, all this uh, electronic adventure, which was a big theme at this time in history. Um, similar time period, David Byrne, songs from the Catherine Wheel. Uh, there are two records with this title. One of them is sort of a like a soundtrack uh, to the Broadway musical that David Byrne had worked on. This one is the version where he takes the songs from it and re-records -rec re it sort of an album style as a studio album. Um, I quite like it. Um, so many of these songs from this album has been actually uh, played by Talking Heads a lot. Um, so it's a very, very inspired album with some great tracks on it. Uh, Michael Rickfors, um, I don't know if you know him, Kicking a Dream, I think it was like his third album maybe. Uh, this is a Swedish guitar player and singer. Um, interestingly, early 70s he became the singer and frontman of the band The Holies, but he made some good solo material and this is a really wonderful album I think. So it is a this is a very sort of a rock album, so late 70s rock album, 1979, but it has a beautiful sort of almost disco-like and funky vibe to it and works pretty good. I like his voice and um, so if you want to listen to a rock record that's not too hard and it's more like funky and groovy that's a pretty cool album, totally underrated, I would say. Now going closer to the, the end of the 80s, this one is quite a nice find. This is uh, Full Circle by the band Full Circle. So this is 
basically jazz fusion, but sort of a late 80s jazz fusion, so it's pretty much spiced up with the sort of 80s aesthetic. Uh, it's much more, it has much more of a pop quality to it. It's mostly instrumentals. Um, there's a lot of flute playing, which is kind of cool because I like um, flutes in jazz music. And um, yeah, it's a great groovy album, very nice listen. Uh, and uh, good fun, uh, very recommendable. Um, now staying in the same vibe, of course, is this one. Time and Chance by Caldera. This was a, uh, well, especially late 70s band, which made, uh, again, sort of a jazz meeting, uh, Latin uh, meeting funk. So we have a nice mixture of sort of jazzy funk music. Uh, if this is something you like, you probably already know this band. Um, so this is another great album, which just doesn't get boring when you listen to it. What's next here in my little stack? Yeah, <laughs> this one is of course very well known. I'm talking about Avalon by Roxy Music. And um, yeah, this was a interesting album that Ro Roxy Music put out in the 80s. And um, it's quite uh, it's quite focused on, uh, on a particular uh, high quality sound. It's very well recorded. Uh, this is a very good sounding record. Um, so let's check out this label here. I usually don't show labels that much. I don't know why. I basically always forget it while I'm making a video like that. Yeah, so um, good record. Quite successful I think back in the day even though I would have to look it up. I mean it's not a it's not a it's not a hit driven record, I wouldn't say that. But um it has its own quite interesting atmosphere. So at this point this band has really uh, come a long way and um interesting record. So this one is from 1986, Vomagic by Bobby Womack. And uh, as you would expect it from a Bobby Womack album, great singing, cool, soulful sound. There is really nothing to criticize here. Beautiful album. Yeah, and finally something contemporary, an album that came out this year, which is uh, Planets and Persona by Richard Barbieri. Well, Richard Barbieri, of course, is the keyboardist from the band Japan in the 80s, but of course a very prolific uh, solo artist and collaborator with dozens and dozens of fascinating musicians. And um, so if you look him up, um, you will realize that uh, this is a quite an amazing musical biography. Now this is a solo album that came out this year. It's a double album, beautiful gatefold sleeve and um, the sound is a very interesting mixture of ambient music but you can l you can hear a lot of uh, glitch moments in it and um, some excursions into sort of a jazzy uh, electronic uh, moments and um, so it's one of those eclectic albums that are quite enjoyable to study them and to listen to them over and over um, so, because you keep discovering new things, um, it's not a it's not a particularly loud album. Um, so it's more uh, sort of in a world of atmospheres and uh, um, sort of interesting uh, acoustic soundscape explorations, as the cover beautifully suggests. So um, it's a really good one, nice double album, and uh, my latest purchase. So. That's it for now, and um, see you next time. Goodbye.